Angeles, grew up in North Long Beach, and uh, been in Laguna Beach since the Navy, and that's been 30 years. I've taken them over 500, uh, around 530, 540,000 photographs lifetime now. I'm past 4,000 paintings. I would guess 10% aren't finished. That'd be 400 pieces out of, yeah, that's about where I'm at. In 95, there's uh, several, I went too fast that year, I did 1,150 paintings. I was doing three a day, see how fast you go, but. As I got out of high school, I didn't know what I was doing. Went to the study college and I didn't know what I was doing. And I had to change majors. I was music art and then went to the Navy. I'm scared to play violin in front of anybody. I play violin. I did some terrible auditions at City College. It's pretty frightening to think back to that time. That they have the audition, you know, they have to accept you anyway. But I did it. And then in the Navy, they got me forced later into a talent show. And I got to play violin in front of people. And I played for the chaplain and the church services. But I, but I got loose. I could found I could do anything I want with the violin and jam with the uh, guys on the guitar on board the ship. And uh, I played songs off the top of my head. I was a ship's artist. I got how that hooked into that for a year. The last year of the Navy, I didn't stand. I stand but one day of duty. Admiral Zumwalt, Elmo Zumwalt, formed the habitability teams aboard the ships for the old rust buckets. I was on an aircraft carrier, the Ticonderoga. I went to uh, to Admiral's quarters and this interior decorator, they had an interior decorator come through, improve the vibes uh, so it's more livable, habitable for the men, so they can get along, so they'll ship over and stay in the Navy longer, that kind of a, kind of a nice thing. She says, Admiral, a, a painting would go real good right here. And I says, I do murals. And she says, you do? Wow, why don't you come down and bring me some? She just responded, bring, bring a sample, you know, da, da, da. And that night, I went and got my old city college junk from the, what I did and brought it down from the class and stuff and brought it down to the boat and submitted it to the XO's cabinet for her to look at. I got called to the XO's office and I'd totally forgotten anything. I thought I was in trouble. What, what was going to, you know, I was going to, well, it must have been something lousy. He says, I hear you're an artist, Miller. We're gonna, this is exactly what he said. I hear you're an artist, Miller. We're gonna put you on, uh, on a mural down in uh, the, uh, at Ward Romantics and see how you do. And so I went down there and uh, painted a big tree, a waterfall, backlit, and they were all very pleased with this stuff. I painted the painting in the, uh, on the wall of the Admiral's quarters, and they loved that. We ended up, that whole year, I painted 56 paintings on that boat. <laughs> 56 paintings, and that's what went on for a good six months before we shipped out overseas to the Vietnam, the Yankee, Yankee Station. There's a lot of stuff I saw during that period about doubts and what you're supposed to be, how the Navy is, and learned a lot of things. I can go on for a month about that stuff. Oh my gosh, there's always somebody to do. Uh, we got a lot of people though. Oh yeah, that was fun. Pretty cool. Because I couldn't tell how many people were there. Oh, give me that cheesecake pose. You look so good for being a, you know, just a mom. Just, mom, mom and a toe ring specialist. There's stuff I should, say, I should you know, <laughs> on tape I shouldn't say. Time on, on uh, Channel 3. Last, but why did you have to see? We don't get to hear you now. I'm serious. You get musical vertigo when you guys. Oh, I love that image of the kids. Oh, that's good. What a beautiful image that is. I, I see a photo here. Photo op. Oh, I see a good one. Yes. Hey, guys. It's really nifty. Why don't we ever do this in other years? Yeah, right. Oh, they're, they're off on their own. Oh, it's Patrick. Yes, we're doing. I got a picture of you on opening day in here. Yeah, that's, that means that that's voyeuristic. Yeah. Never mind. That's a bad, that's a bad joke. Well, I shot a Keiko today at the end of the show. Look at the face. There. Oh, that was gorgeous. Yes, that was magnificent. Up the dale. Up there. Up there. 
Penny Taffy and hey, here. Hey, picture taken. Oh, I, I need to see your face a little better. Thank you. I like that. Good. Stay there, Paul. That's good. Oh, wow. I love this. Ah, that's so beautiful. Go this way. This shows me. Uh -huh. Oh, that's Paul, how do I get a hold of you? Uh, on the arm. Yes, yes, about, I got that. I got it. Right. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is make a list of who wants one of those pictures. Now look at me while you're drawing. Oh, yeah, you can draw. This one will. You guys are so you look great with that plant next to you. It's all, it's a plant. Jungle man! Way too big. Hi, I'm back in my booth again. Hi. Hi, I'm Doug Miller. Been... Is this all you? Yeah, it's all me. Is this all you? Yeah, That's well, pretty it's... good. First thing was actually was Adnan Sirhan's belly dancers, dancers. I played along with them at the Sawdust Festival. But he liked me playing with them because I made it sound good. I was able to pull off the old Egyptian and 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 that kind of a thing with his drum, and it worked just fine. And uh, so, at living with that, that was the first thing that happened. But it was a grounds without a perimeter. It was uh, set up with with booths, but they were just almost like. Uh, Apple crates, big, you know, just was slapped together with a little bench, people selling their jewelry or their pottery, and nobody cared whether they made money or not. Sawdust has been a peri periodical money maker. The birthday painting sequence, writing people's names and birthdays on a canvas. Simple idea, but it complicated at the same time. I put everybody's name and birthday on a canvas with a brush as tiny as it could, so it was almost microscopic reading, but legible. That's the idea. Eventually I made the letters bigger and it still has the same effect. But I uh, did uh, 16 of these paintings over time. These are the birthday paintings. This is painting number five. Yeah, this is painting number eight. This is birthday painting number nine. That, this is painting number 11. Okay, that's birthday painting number 12. I wanted a birthday for each day of the year in my diary. And I kept asking people's names and birthdays have everybody, the waitresses and the people I knew and everybody. And they, then they asked me, well, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? I said, okay, I'll put your names on a painting. And it finally filled out with an uh, average of about four names for each page because there was many, several days it took a long time to get just the one. I thought, well, okay, I will. I'll do a painting. I'll put everybody's name on the thing. So I got a canvas that was an 18 by 36 and painted an orangey red background and different color, like white, darker at the edges. And then I picked the brush first time and wrote somebody's name on it. I don't know who I started with, but I started with somebody just in the middle of that book. I just started writing all the names random on the canvas and just names and dates of their birth without the year. And that was fine. And that was uh, 1975. I finished that thing and took it to the sawdust and uh, got a little award for it. Tracy Muscataro looked at it and cried. It was really puzzling. I, you know, it's really beautiful. She was, it's like something humanity, something, something in the humanities hit her, touching somebody. Anyway, two years later, 1978, I started working on the next one, and I did a big monster. Daisy chained all these names from the book, did the whole thing out of the book, covered the whole canvas, and has 20,000 people's names on it, <laughs> their names and the birthdays, and it's charted on by birthday. So you could find, I could find any name on it. Somebody said, by birthday, I said, find my name on there and asked them what their birthday is, I could find their name on it. What birthday are you, Paul, again? May 18th. It's May, that's five up and 23 this way. So your birthday is about right here. Here's May 18th, right here. It's May 18th, there's a group of people born on May 18th. You got Kimberly Baker, Paula, Paula Rundle's birthday is right there. There's his name on the painting. There you go. Your name was on this thing. How about that? Finally, number three, the painting number three started it, but never finished, never got anywhere. It got like uh, maybe a quarter of the year onto it. But it just took so long and so tedious and wore myself out, and I got into their paintings. And so that remains undone. I still have it. The number four painting was at Sawdust Festival 
and I took a canvas that was a landscape and reworked and rehashed. It was so yeah, and hung it on the booth and started painting names at random of people who came by. I said, "What's your name? What's your name? Your birthday on the painting in the brush." And all these people were delighted to have their name and birthday on there. And I set out. A, I wasn't making any money. I didn't have any much say of paintings up there. I set out a tip bowl on the ladder, right next to me. Put your painting on. You can put a quarter in if you want. Do do do. Well, I ended up making uh, several hundred dollars that summer doing the birthday painting. People lined up on weekends. I had people lined up 30 in a line to get their names on the birthday painting at the sawdust. That was a hit. It was a hit. It was great. A picture on deck. I'm gonna do some, uh, a little errand. Hello, I'm gonna take a picture on the deck in about 10 minutes. Do you want to hear? Yep. I'm gonna announce it over to the PA. Yeah, I'm gonna announce it on the PA. We're gonna do another picture on the deck in about 10, 15 minutes. But everybody wasn't in a picture this morning. We're gonna, we're gonna do it. We're gonna take a picture on the deck in about 10 minutes. We're gonna take a picture on the deck in about 10 minutes. Patrick. Oh, 10, 15, we're gonna announce it on the PA, okay? Hey, we're going to do another one on the deck in about 10... Were you here this morning? No, we're going to do one on the deck in about 10, 15 minutes. I'm going to announce it on the PA. Hi, we're going to do another one on the deck in about 10 minutes. It's fine. If you don't want it, it's fine. Yeah, we're going to last chance. We're going to get everybody in the picture. What happened to the last one? Not enough people. Not enough people the first time. And this one this morning, there were a lot of people missed it, but we still got 100 people. Okay, I'm going to announce that in about 10 minutes, Mark and Robert. <laughs> sit there for an hour before you shoot. Well, there were people coming in and coming in and coming in, and I got them. They finally, they finally arrived if there was anybody coming up. I know, good. but just say the time at, at the, like, like 5.07 and have your camera pointed at that time. You wish for that. It doesn't happen that way. You can't. It's like this is California, and people are on Laguna time. And Laguna time is a half hour behind everybody else's time. I'm just telling people. Have fun. I'm just ignoring you. We're going to take another shot on the deck again. We're going to take another picture on the deck. I hope you're in it. Uh, in about 10 minutes, we're going to do it. Okay. We're going to take a picture on the deck. Hello! Everybody on the deck. All the artists. Uh, uh, all the artists. And all the artists at the booth centers. Good. I still got I still got three, at least three minutes. I got time to announce and then pee, and then announce the second announcement, and then go to the rock. Well, this is fun. Good day, Sawdust. Standing in my way. This is the last day of Sawdust. We took a wonderful picture of the people. There is people on the ground who were the over this morning. We're going to do it again in five minutes on the deck. We're going to have everyone who's a booth sitter or a security or anyone who wishes to be in the picture a second time. We're going to do it again and we quite wonderful. And so I'll get up on the big rock right now above the deck and everyone will make a settle there as soon as they would. Can. And uh, I'll see you with a camera. Start the comes off like a peach. This is tough. I got a time to pee and get to the rock. That's what I got to do. Hi, kids. Get into the big rock. Not drink it. Look at me. We're here. We're pictures with ordinary camera.
we're here. Back to the range. Before that, I was down there playing music, sawing away with a tip, with my tip case out there, and I was pulling $100 a day, 50, 50 to 100 bucks on a weekend day, and uh, maybe $20 on the weekdays. I put a little sign on the ground that said, uh, said, last chance, next fiddler, 50 miles, and stuck that on the ground, and, and people came by and threw quarters in my case. What's funny about playing out in the street there is I sawed away so long, I got better at it, went back to the grounds and played better. And that, was, that was always funny. Yeah, the violin's down at the sawdust right now. I have my viola here. My has a nice uh, ring to it actually this vibe this. yeah now I started making doing painting little canvases now I'm painting nothing but mostly little canvases I'm like Jerry Bob a friend of mine dear Jerry Bob who lived at Barbara's house said well if you're an artist you should I paint every day and I didn't I thought about that but I didn't it didn't hit me for a while I said uh, how could I? I said how could I paint every day there's so much to do it begin one every day and you don't have to finish it that day. Burnout is the great enemy of any artist, of anybody. I painted this little table right here. I uh, have my brushes here, and my water can is not up here right now, but I usually sit and watch David Letterman and do that. Paintings here that are like a big collection, they're all like one big art project, and they go on and on and on. Every one of these is part of the larger whole. So people say, you know, it's hard to sell your work, you know, you sell it, you miss it. But uh, give it, uh, in the early days I realized, well, give it, give it a good home, good enough. And uh, that I, the experience of doing the painting is really the, the painting. You do it, it becomes a place on somebody's wall for how long, and you hope they don't get tired of it. The idea is you do a painting that's comfortable, it'll stay there. And if it has its integrity, It'll stay there. They'll they'll pass up other pieces of art for it. That's the idea. If you do a great piece, it's great. It holds up itself. And paintings like great architecture, if it's destroyed, you'd weep over it. And so I want to have that feeling about my work. And I uh, that's 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 neat. There actually has been people come into the booth and get weepy. It's amazing. It's touching. They see something. I don't know what it is, but they see something that's really there. Yeah, when I'm critic of my own work, I want it to stand up to time. And that's, uh, and you just can't go and be schlocky about that. I'm not a great portraitist. I've never claimed to be that. But it's nice to get a likeness. If you can get a likeness, that's really a cool thing. And oddly enough, that's the most popular stuff I do. The stuff that gets taken, bought first, or people. What gets me, I mean, these are places I've been, they're really there. But to go paint English cottages or paint like somewhere I haven't been. Now, if I hadn't been, I've been to Hawaii, but if I have been to Hawaii and I painted Hawaii and a bunch of trees and natives and stuff, I call it a corruption in a sense because you have nothing to do with it. It's like, it's like ultimately after you're gone nobody will give a crap about that piece it was simply done as a piece of wallpaper the difference between a piece of wallpaper and a and a piece of art where you're where it's done just to decorate your house it's no no more important than the furniture or if it's done because there was an impact on your life that made you paint that that then it then it, it goes up a step there's a there's another layer to the painting that it matters somehow and that's what where great art goes and that's why Van Gogh it's why these people get appreciated later because they actually had what they were about there and presenting it the, you don't want to be a cheap imitation of someone else either it's, it's nice you can copy get an idea of what someone else does but you don't want to do what exactly what they did because you're they claim they claimed that they got that and they climbed a great mountain to get there and that's a great thing but you can take it and see what you can do with it and that's all right repeating's not a sin 
it's repeating when repeating is monetary, but repeating because it's it's changing, or because you're evolving, or because you do a small version, you do a large one, you do a big one, you, you play with it. That's, that's, that's good. That's, you're learning. All the time you're learning. If you're not learning, what the hell? I, I think the intriguing thing is to paint the idea of painting, say, 50 of the same painting and doing it at the same time and seeing what, how you do it and come off that way and see what it does. That's, a, that's an interesting idea. Art and music are related, they're the compositions. But painting is like, kind of like that. You want to make a, a light little souffle of it. Make it as easy to paint as you, as you can. You make, it's difficult, but you make it look easy. And it's like that. That's the way music and art is. You, I never had the, the want to, to work for someone else. Aberdeen did that wonderful cartoon. I love the Aberdeen cartoons. They, they, he, 1953, 54, he did this book, Aberdeen's Naked People. The human condition, basically, and there's the guy who's in the corporate office, and they got the chart on the wall with the guy, the mean guy behind the desk, and he's holding the guy's head in his hands, and the guy's headless, standing there naked with the contract. He's, he's got his contract, but he's got his head over there, you know. And uh, it's a beautiful essay on how we work for someone else, but we lose ourselves in the process. But I'm working for me. I'm this guy.